Picks and bans for game number one, Jinair versus IM. And uh, it's all about that Zareth. You know, are we just going to see it banned? There's the Cassiopeia ban against Frozen, of course. We see that quite a bit. Yeah, not really going to affect GBM's champion pool. That's not something that he's been overly active in playing. Very meta pick so far from GBM. And there's Callista as well. Yeah, we'll we'll see. be right out, considering that... I mean, both Pilot and, and Captain Jack have been good on that champion, and it yeah. is so lane dominant. It is, and, and the way they, the way players build it here too, they don't necessarily rely on the attack speed from the uh, from the Ruined Hurricane. They go for that Bloodthirster into the IE. You know, they build it a little bit differently, so the nerfs didn't right. quite hit Korea as hard as it did the other regions. And there is Lulu taken out. It's a bit of a surprise. GBM, though GBM does oh, like GBM's. to play the mid lane Lulu. And, and Trace's really champion too. pool is so vast. And, you know, I wonder, Trace has been playing a lot of weird stuff in solo queue. We've seen that top lane Rek'Sai over in the LPL with Go going on OMG picking that up. But Trace has been playing a lot of top Rek'Sai in solo queue do you these think days. Do you think it's good? Yes, I do think it's good. Oh, really? And why is that? Can't get ganked. Uh, you have, it's basically like having two teleports on the same champion. Sure. Uh, so you could split push really effectively, especially if you get a Tiamat first. So will they give over the Rek'Sai? Because it will be a flex pick for Jyn'Air, I'm pretty sure. Uh, there is a Thresh ban against Tucson in the meantime. Yeah, pretty Forza. smart. Yeah, champion has been very dominant on. Yeah, you don't give him, he's been best on Leona and Thresh so far this season. And you know that, hello? Oh, Zareth. Zareth. Okay. okay. Yes, I'm so happy. We'll, we may see the top lane Rek'Sai now. This is really going to be interesting. I'll picked up right away by Jyn Aaron. Like you just mentioned, that's a bit of a flex pick now. Interesting. And uh, to keep in mind as well, too, that Morgana that Trace has done so well on in the top lane is still available, too. So Jyn Aaron always a chance to pick that up. Oh, unless I am takes it right now. Now, we did see Garen in the LPL once, I believe, right? This season? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Gamty picked it. So it was we're going to see it here, Monty? It sounds like you don't think we will. I think it was, but this is I am, I think man. it was really awful. You do realize this is an incredible miracle that we're watching. These guys really don't have a lot to lose right now. Garen and Mordekaiser. Faker was playing mid-mord yesterday in solo queue. I was watching that. Well, I think the Morgana takeaway is a little bit better against Jyn'Air. My so humble yeah. play-by-play -play caster opinion. <laughs> Rek'Sai also... Ooh, well, Bard's not available technically yeah, right now. Yeah, you can't play Bard right now. Yeah. Uh, all right, they're going to eliminate the Lissandra. That has been one of GBM's best champions. Take the Morg away as well. I think that's good. We haven't seen uh, Trace play that top Morgana for a while. It's still out there, though. You, you know, it is still it is still something you need to be worried about when you're playing against Jyn Air, I feel. The other crazy thing about Rek'Sai is that you can actually, like, take a camp early as Rek'Sai just because if you start Doran's Blade, uh, Papa Smithy was talking about this on the LPL cast, hmm. and you could, you could basically, like, Scion, just go to the jungle, take a camp, hit level two. Yeah really easily. And then just like gain your health back with the uh, passive? Yeah, it's pretty disgusting actually. So you bad. have a ton of sustain on top lane Rek'Sai. Yes, she's great in the jungle. Maybe they'll take the Maokai here. Oh, I'd be so sad. Uh, uh, looks like they'll take the Janna, which means that won't be a support Maokai at least. If they lock maybe it, it in, will they be. will. Could be, maybe I'm, it's I'm still hoping for... Mid Janna? No, I'm hoping, <laughs> uh, damn it, no! <laughs> Sorry, uh, the no dream hope is dead. for you. The dream for top Rek'Sai is dead. No hope. It's still good, though. All right, well, we, we might see it yet. We might see it. You never know. Well, Sonstar could be grabbing this Sivir here, and we have seen Sivir kind of pop back into popularity since IEM, and Korea was like, oh, yeah, she's still good, right? She exists now, yep. which is actually funny because if you remember the big Sivir cranes in Season 4, it actually started in Korea and went for weeks without anybody else picking up Sivir. Yeah. And true. then pretty much continued for a really, really long time just because of her utility. So the fact that this region was the one who inexplicably dropped it was a little odd. So Vi will be the lock-in. That's why they took the early Morgana, by the way. All right. Well, looks like Ares will be taking that Vi to the jungle. All right, so, so this is a really all-in composition. This is, looks very similar to what KT likes to play, actually. I was going to say, yeah, pretty pretty heavy engaged stuff. And, you know, as a team against a team that's going to beat you late game, I think your only chance is to really win early. So good decision by I am to go with this comp, I think. Yeah, the fact that the Janna has been already selected, though, for Jyn Air is a bit 
problematic. It will well, yeah. it will really help with the disengage. They're, they may take Corky just for his poke and his mobility to escape some of these team fights. And oh, Karthus is a great pick. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, against a heavy engage comp. It's like, yes, Just, uh, come don't to engage. Me. Come yeah, to seriously. <laughs> and Ezra would be even safer for Pilot. You still yep. have that poke with the uh, Mystic shot, so it still kind of fills that role, but it uh, it's going to be a little bit less gankable than Corky. Yeah. I I think what Jyn is doing here to adapt is really good. That Karthus is yeah. going to be strong. Nice. You have a lot of kill pressure in the Maokai lane at the very least, so we'll see if Chaser camps top a little bit so that you can get some of those kills. Chaser and or uh, Pilot and XD rather will be pretty passive in that lane, just trying to farm up if they do end up with the 2v2. So man, what do you do if you're Tucson right now or if you're IM in general? I mean, could they theoretically just grab the Hecarim and try to just go for even more crazy hard engage? <laughs> you I could, feel like it's a way you to get You could really in all in like that. That is yeah. absolutely true. I don't think it would be a bad idea. Because if they pick some like more of a tanky mid laner or like less of an engage, isn't it kind of like giving up a little bit on the comp? And then what do you do? Then you've got this comp that can't really do what you tried to make it do. Yeah, they, so they're do sad. Think? They're sad they can't pick Maokai right now. Yeah, I think Hecarim wouldn't be a bad choice here. I mean, not, you've got Scion, but they can play Ari too. Uh, use that mobility really to all in and have Lilac play in top Kale. and Kale. Huh? Interesting. I don't know what to make of this, actually. Well, I wonder. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be a support Kale unless I switch it. Nope, top Kale. And I would imagine it's going to be a mid Lissandra. Yep. Although this is Tucson we're talking about. There we go, switching it around again. Support Kale is something that's uh, still out there. We haven't seen it in a while. I don't know how well it's going to work against the bot lane for Jin Air, but maybe you could take it into a lane swap? They've still got 10 seconds to switch if they want to. Yeah, I don't know about this support kale. It's been a while since we've seen it. Uh, the last major instance of support kale was SK running it last season in the EU LCS. I know uh, talking to and rated that he really liked it for its ability to chunk people super hard in the lane because of her shred. Basically, nice. you get a few autos in and you just do massive damage to them right as the laning phase starts. Whether they're going to take it into the 2v2 or not, I don't know. Seems like it'd be hard to get in auto range with Kale against Janna and Ezreal, who can play pretty far back. I don't feel like Maokai would be super vulnerable against well, us in a 1v2 as well, too. He could just kind of sit under turret, couldn't he? Yeah. I think this is, we'll have to see what their plan is. But look how much defense and that we see coming out of IM. They have a way to make Lissandra untargetable. Kale will help with the Divine Intervention. They've got Black Shield, so many shields. Really Fair crazy enough. comp from IM. Let's get the game. Well, here we go, guys. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, Jyn Air versus Incredible Miracle. And uh, as usual, we've got the crazy Incredible Miracle fans in the studio never giving up <laughs> on their team that has been around for so long, but it's just not had much success. There's the uh, the general manager for IM. Coach Khan. That's right. Coach as well. And just a dude that's been uh, around eSports for a long, long time, going way, way back to StarCraft One when he was the... Uh, manager and coach of the name clan if you're familiar with way old school brood war I guess. but he's been around a while that's what we're trying to say so see if I am can find some success they did win their first match against the Jyn Air Green Wings 2-1 it was a bit of a weird day for Jyn Air back then but uh, as a team you know has Jyn Air really changed a whole lot since then I think so. I think that their yeah. consistency has improved. As we've seen, they're, they're on a three-game match win streak at the moment. They seem to be slowly solving their issues. Lots of we'll things. see how it works out. Now, they are going to donate the Krugs over, it looks like, having that Rek'Sai start. There is a ward there. They know there's a ward there, so they're hiding in the brush until the last second just to make sure they can. It's a fan wanting I am to win today. Surprise the opposition. Trace will be taking wolves here early on. Yep. And just a quick leash. So they're going to ping this. And this will be handed over thanks to Rek'Sai Sustain. Getting the 
a big one right there. So giving all the farm actually over to Pilot. You mean the ancient yeah, All the XP, rather. It's the ancient okay. Krug, Monte Cristo. One minion till the level. Whatever. There we go. Come on. A oh, lot of really good on start. Star. Yeah, no kidding. Great CC from XD. Now, they, they knew that was happening, too. They had that warded, so I don't think they expected. This is a bit su more subtle. So normally when we see the Rek'Sai blue side, okay, let me, what do we, what do we call this? Rek'Sai jungle blue side Krug transfer, <laughs> which That's actually a, is a thing. Can so. we make an acronym out of that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out later, but... <laughs> Uh, basically, in this situation, typically support and AD share that XP, so they actually changed it up this time. Also note that XD started Tornado this game for that knockup, so this is a very specific plan that they had coming into this one uh, in order to give Pilot just that one minion, uh, or what was it, three minion up until his level two, so they yep. could play very aggressively right there and burn uh, Sonstar down early. Now, Sonstar has been able to get back up. Tucson does have some sustain. So. Yep, we've got that heal with Kale. See how much it matters. Intensive. They actually couldn't even uh, get the healing potion out of Sonstar right there. So. Yeah. But whatever. Take what advantage you get. It really doesn't slow down Rek'Sai very much at all. Well, Kale used to be one of my favorite oh, wow. supports because. Uh, Oh, Rift Scuttler there, taken, actually smited Crap away fight. by Chaser, not bad. Yeah, interesting pathing from Ares, trying to get both Scuttlers super, super early. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Went from Gromp to Blue to Scuttler just to keep the lanes defended here. But he does lose out on that second Crab. Now, when you do that on a champion like Vi, doesn't that kind of broadcasts that you're not planning on trying for any really early ganks that you just want to try to get to six as fast as possible and get that ult? Well, yeah, you're, I mean, you definitely want to try and do that on Vi, generally speaking. Um, but I, it just gives you that extra peace of mind, yeah. Sure. So Rex like coming in right now. Crabs down. Yeah, here comes Chaser. There's another great two-man knockup. Ex exhaust down. Can they keep him back enough? Tucson goes down. First blood taken by XD appropriately. He earned it. <laughs> with the My ignite. Opinion. That's right. Two flashes burned right there. Three summoners out for Incredible Miracle. Good gank from Chaser. There was a ward there, but Chaser just came in a little bit too fast for IM to react. Uh, like Kale was placing that ward. Oh, oh yeah. you're right. Okay. He was in the I brush see. and I see. got the drop. Ares going was to it? invade. It's not really the drop with Rek'Sai, though. It's kind of the, the opposite effect. <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming from it's the true. ground, Monty. So. Sorry. You, oh. you, are, you are right to <laughs> criticize my use of language. Got the pop-up. The pop-up, there you go. You got the pop? Got the pop. Not the drop, got the pop. <laughs> GBM, gonna try to pop him in the mid lane, but I don't think that's gonna work. It's hard to hard to gank a Karthus, a safe Karthus. Yeah, this is really interesting with all these spell shields that we have this game, how Janair is going to play it out late. Tucson uh, giving up that first blood early though may cause him some issues, but especially with the Karthus ult as well and this insane all-in ability. I, I am as a really interesting comp. They could play, there is a lot of playmaking potential with this composition in terms of how you use your abilities in this team fight, the way you use these spell shields, the way you use um, your ability to be untargetable. Should be quite interesting indeed. Jyn Air, pretty straightforward with their composition. Uh, they've got a little bit of poke, but mostly they just want, they want they're accepting the all-in. With, with Karthus. I like it, actually. I was hoping we'd get to see some more 5.5 uh, exclusive picks, you know, a little bit more Nautilus support, a little bit of tankier junglers. Sejuani jungle. Yeah, we'll probably still see more of it later on. The only Sejuani we've seen is Sejuani support. It's true. That's not very good. We found out it wasn't very good. I wish it was, because I'd love to play that. I actually think I might go play some more Kale support. It's always been one of my favorites, actually. You've got slows, you've got heals, you've got decent damage, you've got that invulnerability with the ult. There really is a, a versatile support pick. Yeah, problem is get all in before six. It's not much you can do to peel, really. So. Well, you've got your slow, and, and the heal does speed them up, too. So you do actually have a, a decent amount of tools to save, I, I think, anyway. Well, I mean, compared to the Janna, though. Well, compared to a traditional support, yeah. But you do what you can, you know? If you're going to pick the Kale, you have to uh, have the thing be ready for this. The thing, thing that is good about the Kale, though, is that once Kale hits six, it becomes extremely difficult for them to use that Karthus ult to 
gank in the bottom lane. Yeah. Chaser here again, they're trying to punish. Sunstar still has flash up, however. He does, but if they can just burn it too, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Chaser being very patient here in this bot lane. It's at level five. So he's got that going for him. There we go, trying to come in. Got him patient. There's a Requiem coming down as well. They're going to hit it right before Tucson is able to get that level six, still level four, and that's another easy kill. Really good gank right there, actually. Yeah. Very, Great very well timing coordinated. from GBM. Also, being able to hit that Requiem, Frozen, of course, has the ability to try and interrupt him. You know, I couldn't I, find that. Couldn't find that timing, and then they get a kill right onto the mid lane, and they're really abusing this pre six kale. They're doing a very good job, and Jinair once again, a very tight early game. This is how we saw them against the GE Tigers. Uh, Chaser was getting a lot of ganks off in those games as well. Now the question is, can they properly snowball this or not? Because they have a, a solid lead to be sure. Uh, they have CS advantages in two lanes and are pretty much even in top. So. Well, they've got about 20 minutes before they start to act a little bit silly, traditionally speaking, if you look at their other games. So we'll see what kind of a lead they can get. Looks like it's going to be a dragon attempt by IM. And this, it's not, it's not maybe the best time to do it because I feel like Jinair can get there. Yeah, they're actually just going to leave it go right away. There was still some vision there for Jinair as well. It's interesting that we haven't seen a lot of Vi in Korea. And then the, when we start seeing more of her, I was surprised to see her this game because she's been nerfed. And it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's a little bit of damage off of Assaulted Battery, a little mobility, and considering mostly she just gets in with her ult or her Q anyway, yeah. the, the movement speed decrease isn't that big of a deal. But of course she has been popular in many other regions. Well, she still offers a lot of that same utility, even if it's slightly less so. With that little movement speed nerf. Chaser, Chaser. Yep, trying to come in from behind. Lilac still has flash. He's got that deactivated. Can he get out? Oh, he nope. got CC'd. Ults himself. Can he flash away in time? I don't think so. There's a kill for Trace now. Tried to get out. There's such ridiculous kill it. pressure on Lilac in that top side. Yep. You can chain the CC together so well to just eliminate that E. And Chaser was able to do it. Not nope. only that, but Chaser didn't even have to use his flash wow. right there. Oh, teleport coming in. Oh it's a big boy. chunk of Ares taken out. Jinair could turn onto this dragon. GBM got hit with that dark binding, but Great it's going to be an easy dragon for Jinair. Really good response. And I mean, that is a traditional thing, right? You see the top lane get ganked, you go for dragon, but Jinair is just totally ready. Like you said, that kind of two teleports, basically. Yeah, they're really, really poised. Yeah. Uh, this game, and they use the fact that they had taken down Lilac and therefore eliminated the TB threat. IM has TP advantage right now, but no way to make a play on the Dragon. So heads up play by Jinair for sure. As we see items start to come in, GBM will be going for that Rod of Ages first. Double Morel and Omicon for IM. So Jinair looking like they're going to be scaling a little bit right here. And you know, frankly, Doha, they shouldn't be winning this hard early based purely off of itemization because yeah, they've, right. they've got a couple catalysts. They have a tier early on. So the scary thing for Incredible Miracle is this is where Incredible Miracle should be doing well in this game. They have to make Assault and Battery work right now. They have to punish the scaling or else it's going to be lights out. Yep. A little bit rough already. GBM taking a bit of poke from Frozen, but nothing really to worry about. Chaser looking for another gank as uh, Trace goes in onto Lilac. Lilac still with that flash available. He's just going to walk away, looks like. Lilac saw his flash up, so. Yep. They didn't really want to commit to that one quite yet. And also, it's just so sneaky right here, too, because Lilac's thinking, oh, well, Chaser wasn't there. Hmm. Well, not coming in, but he's going to stick around for a little while. Lilac trying to play back at the moment. Well, I think he knows Chaser could be in that rush, which he wasn't just until uh, just a moment ago. Meanwhile, Ares started to counter jungle, stomping all the on all the tunnels. He knows exactly where Ares is right now. Uh, getting a bit of deep wards in there too as well. Not too bad. It's actually really dangerous for Ares to be doing this alone. He could get caught too. Here comes XD. I, well, they know he's in there obviously because the Rek'Sai tunnels are getting stomped on. And there's a slow from XD. He's going to get the pink ward. Oh. Ares Seeker. Oh, uh, they know he's in there. Yeah, they can see him, or Chaser can They're see him. They're worried about TP advantage right now, and they don't have pressure on the bot lane, so it's understandable. They just want to get him out and clear out all the wards. 
Sansar trying to gain a little bit more vision in that tri brush as well. The pilot there was a nice poke. Can't quite save the pink ward. Oh wow, Aries came back in again. Even with Frozen right there. I am really looking for a fight here. Well, this is, Jin Air knows that this will be a 4v5, so they don't want to push this. They just want to play passively, see if they can poke them out, convince yeah. them not to get in here and prevent any further deep wards from going down. Well, you can see Lilac just playing way back in the top lane on the minimap, too. He wants to be ready to teleport in if they need him. But I think that was really smart of Jin Air not to take yep. that fight. You know you have the advantage. You still want to scale right here. You should be happy with where you are based on your item choices at this particular point in the game. So don't take a fight. Oh, here we go. Sivaralt activate. They're going to try to dive this Ares. There's a Q. They're going to go on to XD. They might be able to get the kill here. There's a flash, though, and XD backs away. Oh, man. And when, when a gank like that doesn't work out for you against a team like this, like Jyn has got, that's scary, especially because it looks like they're going to take more damage on this mid lane turret. TP coming in, so they had to burn TP in the end yep. uh, just to it. save the mid turret. Frozen was coming down, but he wasn't quite there to join in on the gank, so instead, TP has to be used to save the mid lane tower. Jyn Air is playing this really well, yeah. really well. They know exactly what I am wants to do. They're going to just be happy with the lead that they have and play it out for the late game, try and just take that pacing, wait until they hit their item power spikes, and then really take control of this game and eliminate Incredible Miracle's threats. So I like what we're seeing from Jyn Air so far. I am just not finding the room to make the plays. And well, we know, we know Jyn Air, and we know they have no problem at all being very, very patient, very, very methodical in their games. They, uh, I think they probably average the longest yeah, game they do. time in our league right now. It's them and Najin for yeah, sure. Yeah. As we can see, a lot of the players with the top gold per game are pretty much all on. It's like piloted Captain Jack and OQ. Like they're pretty much all on Najin and Jin Air. Yep. When you have the longest game, that's not too. Yeah. Average too gold shocking. per game is not gold per minute, but just total gold per game is yeah. very high for some of these Jin Air players. Well, I am. They're probably going to need to, I don't, what do you think? They're probably going to need to wait till the next dragon before they can really try to make a play with this composition of theirs. Yeah, I mean, the thing, scary thing is, is that Trace has his TP up, so he will have it for the next dragon. Lilacs is coming back up, should be 20 to 30 seconds after dragon comes up, I would say. Uh, maybe it'll actually time up nicely. We'll see. He did cancel it, so it does have that lower cooldown than usual. You know, all lanes right now leading by about 10 to 20 CS for uh, Jyn Air as well, too. And I am, of course, they lost a bit trying to go for those ganks, but Jyn Air just really pushing that advantage in lane, too. They can be, they can feel super comfortable. Oh, yeah. About what's going on. It's Frozen's first game on this mid Morgana, too. So, I mean, oddball picks. The thing, too, is Jyn Air is, has this season usually look this good, you know, in the earlier parts of the game. It's just, you know, when we get to that later part of the mid game, will the kind of confusion and indecisiveness still be there? Or will they have tightened things up a bit? Yeah, I'll have to take a look at this yeah. game and try and make our assessment. Sansar taking a, oh man. Wow, that is not right what you want to Right before drag. Happen. Yep. Totally not worth it right there. Nope. Lilac still with TP down, now the dragons come live. Well, Sansar has a couple pots, so he'll be able to regen some of that health. But in the meantime, Jyn'Air's going to get total vision control over the Dragon Pit, so either way, it's not looking too good for IM. Bummer. Yeah, they should just go for it now, or they should have gone for it with the poke advantage that they have and the fact that... Yeah. Up here we go, Ares. Yep. Knock up onto Ares, gets slowed down by that wall of pain. True Shot Barrage comes through for a bit of damage. And again, Jyn'Air just poking IM away from this Dragon. They're going to activate it. I am could still try something. Lilac's gonna recall and buy, and he'll be ready to teleport down, it looks like. But by the time that happens, Jyn'Air, there's Trace. a teleport coming in from Trace. Just gonna help secure that dragon. They're gonna try. Rift Scholar actually takes the CC. Ares tries to come in onto GBM. Takes a lot of damage, GBM low, but he's carved this. He's made to die. Meanwhile, XD pops that heal. Here comes a Requiem. They're gonna get XD. Double kill, actually, for Sansar coming in. Lilac will eventually go down, and Jin Air is able to take that fight, although it was a bit on the messy side. Well, but now they can just go ahead and actually dive Sansar right here. Yeah, it looks that way. Chaser coming in. Oh, what? Oh, it's wow, there was crazy. not enough support right there. 
Didn't realize Chaser was going to go in quite so early. They could still go ahead and take this dragon, however. Yeah, I think so. Uh, a little bit of an unfortunate moment for Frozen in that fight when it's Dark Binding hit the Rift Scuttler. Also, Lilac ulted GBM to kill him. That, it doesn't really matter if you ult the Karthus at that point because yeah. then he's just going to get that damage off in the channel as well. Probably could have picked a better target. Pilot pretty easily able to clean that one up. Ooh, I like the new uh, dragon counter. Yep. And I like this one better too because I felt like where it little it just lit up little parts of the yeah, logo like one that was pixel. That was like from a graphic design perspective that just gave me nightmares. I like this much better where you can just see the number much clearer. All right, let's take a look at this again. So Trace gets the teleport and they Ares is able to with the Kale ult get onto GBM. Now watch this. I don't know why Lilac ults GBM right there. Yeah. Uh, he couldn't get to Chaser or Pilot, but probably anybody else would have been superior. And then GBM, where he dies, gives him great zoning pressure around the Dragon Pit right there and gets his Requiem off, which is getting scarier and scarier and scarier as he starts to stack up this Rod of Ages. The Chaparage comes through, but it looks like it'll be a tower for IM. Yep, they'll be able to grab the first one of the game, actually, despite being down in uh, every other conceivable way. <laughs> Kale starting with the... Going to be building into Face of the Mountain, too. Yet another shield for Incredible Miracles. Yeah. It's going to get interesting. Get interesting. It could. It could. I feel like a lot of the team fights are going to really depend on GBM's positioning on Karthus. You know, will he be able to sit in there and do that sustained damage that they're going to kind of really need him to do? Because would you say this game is, this uh, comp for Jynera is going to be a little bit on the low side in terms of damage as the game goes on? Uh, well, Karthus does insane damage, so we'll... If he can get in. Yeah, if he can get in, this is true. Yeah. This is true. If so. he gets caught out, so Jynera is reliant on him for that reason. And, you know, Blue Build Ezreal can do a lot in the late game as well. It takes a while to get there. Yes, it does, but once yeah. you get there, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. And look at this, they're gonna be kiting too. You can see Ezreal building into the Iceborne Gauntlet, so. They know they want these prolonged team fights with Karthus and Ezreal where they just kite out the shields and wait for them to expire from IM. I think this is a smart build given the yeah. situation that they're up against right here. Well, when you're kiting in a fight like that too, that doesn't usually give Sivir a lot of opportunities to get in an auto as well, so that'll work out pretty well. Shabraj, a lot of damage onto Tusa and his chaser gonna chase. Sounds redundant, but it's questions we have to ask, Monte Cristo. <laughs> we need to know. Uh, Jyn Air, I, I would be a bit worried about this Righteous Glory from Trace. I think you have a lot of guarantees that Incredible Miracle is going to be engaging into you. And having a Rod of Ages on Maokai this game, I think would be good to add some more damage late. So I, I guess I'm a little not sold by the Righteous Glory pickup. Yeah. He'll just have to go into Death Cap after this. Easy answer. <laughs> Door build. I prefer Lich Bane. <laughs> Yeah, man. Get those out. Or just go Trinity Force, dude. Trinity Force Maokai actually used to be a legit build. Yeah, well, I mean, with a lot of these top lane tanks, you can just put a Trinity Force on them and just be like, there, fine. I'm going to get in and hit people. I've got a Sheen, whatever. Trinity Force is like the, the lazy man top lane tank's weapon. Although, when you look at what it actually is, it seems like you couldn't really be lazy when you use it, or you're just going to totally cut the heck out of yourself. <laughs> so many swords. Who know what? All three of them, in fact. <laughs> Who knows where they're going <laughs> or how they work in that weapon. That's right. Why are swords more effective when placed in a triangle? I, I don't, don't know. know. Why are swords effective on uh, characters that only shoot bullets? Or have arm cannons like Ezreal. Yeah, exactly. Trace and Lilac dueling in the top lane. Lilac finally having to flee the fight. Because trees can survive winter. Malkai's a pine tree. <laughs> He's not scared. Those coniferous trees, man, they're really OP against uh, That's right. Lissandra. Oh, wow, 4 HP. Whew. GBM actually gets that yeah. after an attempted steal. Close call. About as close as it gets. Now, Chaser can't quite clear up that pink ward. It's a pretty low, though. Going to be a Blade of the Rune King next for Violet here. His fancy little blue build. Yep, looks that way. Going to be a lot of delay, though, before he actually picks up the Last Whisper. And not a lot of high HP targets, either, on IM for that Blade of the Ruin King to do work. 
bit interesting. Incredible Miracle doing a really good job pushing these lanes, though. Starting to get damage down onto the towers, using that wave clear provided by Two Sins Righteous Fury. And we are seeing a bit of a shift in terms of pressure, and wow, okay. that was a little bit rough. Lilac does manage to take out Lilac and the turret. Lilac gets 1v1 again, the story of IM. That's, that's right, seriously. Lilac is not the best, not the best duelist we've seen Lilac, in League of Legends. Lilac just doesn't have any armor right now, and the Muramana completed. This Ezreal can really lock him down and deal a lot of damage. Slow with the Iceborne. You can follow up on your EU too. Pilot also didn't even have to burn a summoner right there. Meanwhile, Lilac used Flash, so not really sure what happened in that bottom side, but really big advantage for Pilot after that. Maybe we'll get a replay. Meanwhile, GBM farming just fine in the mid lane, 237 CS at 23 minutes. It's about what you're looking for. And he's got Death Cap completed as well now, so GBM's got some pretty legit damage going on. All right, good setup for the Dragon. Deep Ward's already in for Jyn Air. Yeah. They have Pink Wards already set up. Incredible Miracle. They make a play right here. They are, I am as two Pink Wards topside at the moment. Going to be the biggest help in the world. Two's are going for those cooldown boots. Interesting enough. Well, I mean, the more you have those abilities up, the more effective they'll be. Our Ares gets in on the GBM. They're going to try to lock him up, keep him on the fight. Meanwhile, Dragon is taken by Jyn Air. Tucson just trying to hack people away with that Righteous Fury. Oh, Ares tried to get over the wall, couldn't quite do it. There's the ult from Kale. Whoa, that's a lot of damage onto IM. And Pilot's there's the follow-up now. Pilot double. gets the double kill. That was a great engage from Chaser. Oh, Holy, yeah. what a good knockup in order to chase that one down. GBM kidding. just using that are the Requiem to really get a lot of damage done for the follow-up. And they yep. have that great, and there's the, I mean, the Righteous Glory actually proved to be sort of useful right there. So I take it back. <laughs> Genera used it really, really well. I mean, it just seems like. Oh, he didn't even use it. Wow, amazing. Oh. He also built Abyssal second. So trying to power up GBM's damage right now. Very interesting. Well, let's watch this again. I mean, Ares tries to get in on the GBM, but he just doesn't. Have well, they think there's a follow-up, but Lilac yeah. actually gets stopped by the Twisted Advance. Were they able to get on GBM? I think that's a good fight for IM, but they just couldn't make it happen. Ares, they ignore him until he's down. Now look at this. There's wow. the follow-up right there. Chaser gets the nice knockup coming in in order to finish off Ares and delay him long enough, but that was a great play by Trace. The W onto the Lissandra to prevent the follow-up ultimate onto GBM allowed them to really turn that one around. Definitely. And uh, throughout all that, too, or at the very beginning of that fight, Jynair was able to take the third dragon. That does give them a pretty healthy lead in dragons as well, but they're about 5,000 gold ahead in this game. Defending this mid lane turret. Looks like they might have to give it up. We'll see how the wave from GBM ends up being. Chaser getting yeah. into that dark binding. It's going to be really hard for them to hold this, of course. Look how yeah. big the waves are in the side right now. Jenner had to go clean those out after the dragon. So it's okay, though. They still took the advantage. They got the objective. Third dragon of the game already in 25 minutes. Yep. So Jenner, I, I mean, I like how aggressively they're playing around these objectives this game. They did pick a more late game oriented composition, but they got the ball rolling early. They have a large gold lead. They have those scaling items really starting to come into power right now. The big thing too, the cool thing is that you really do see Jyn Air have everybody on the team be in the place they're supposed to be too during these fights, you know? Yeah, they've, they've, had, some, makes a difference. they've had some really good positioning. And even when they got caught out a little bit, by Ares, it looked like maybe they would be able to assassinate GBM. Everybody knows what their role on the team is. Yep. And, you know, I honestly think that uh, Frozen needs to be a little bit more on the ball in terms of black shielding, because had he had a black shield on the Lilac, uh, then maybe Lilac could have gotten in and actually used that Frozen Tomb properly hmm. onto GBM. Because if they kill GBM without GBM doing damage, it's a major win for them. Yeah. Well, it kind of looked like they were going to have him. I mean, he was so far out of the fight. But then, it just didn't work out. Trace was there. Trace in the place. 
And now Janair able to get a lot of deep wards in onto uh, the barren side of the jungle. Yep, should be pressuring around this Baron right now, trying to draw Incredible Miracle in for a fight. Yep. TP is up. See if they actually start it. They have that Rek'Sai Tremor Sense just to check out what's going on in the pit. And I am maybe forced to face check this one. Oh, they do a little bit of damage to Frozen, but that Black Shield helps mitigate a good amount of it. Baron chases off Jinair. Trace just waiting right now for a teleport opportunity. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna go down and try to keep this push going here. On the Lilac, Lilac on the run a little bit. Yeah, he can't deal with this Maokai right no. now. No, he can't. Oh, wow, that was a really nice sound Oh, going in, this advance, Trace. Oh, he can't escape, he didn't actually get out of that. He has to burn that flash. Wow, getting that summoner out of the way is so nice for Jinair. Yeah, Rek'Sai coming around though. Can they finish off this kill? There's the tunnel. He try. Oh. has to use his ult. Wow, and so this could lead to possibly a decent Baron attempt for Jinair in the near future. What do you think? Still too risky? Or are the summoner and ult out of the way for a little bit? No. Well, they need to get some more pink wards up there, at least for the moment as well. So it could be a, bit of a hard time for them until they go back and pick those up. Only one pink in the inventory at the moment. True enough. All right, well, 60 seconds about until the next dragon comes up. This would be the fourth for Jin Air, as we've seen before. Chaser really needs to get that Oracle's Lens so they can close this game. So if he buys it on this back. Oh, Ruby Crystal. Don't think that's going to be the best buy for him at this point in time. Either you want to get a pink ward, ward right there, or go ahead and grab up the Oracle's Lens so you can properly bait this Baron, which would be a great way to win the game right now. Yep. Fourth up Dragon up in 25. Upgrading trinkets, come on guys. It's cheap and it helps so much. Especially that Oracle's. I am just gonna try to push up the mid lane here. Trying to get themselves ready for this dragon. But the vision already very, very good. And it doesn't look like Jinair is going to be giving that up anytime soon. Jinair's had really good setups. And I am has been a little bit late to the dragon so far this game. Yeah, Jinair's just been very, very tight about everything this game. Dragon activated. They're going to go for it. I am looking for an angle to possibly come in. Nice Maokai wall. right there though. Yeah, that wall paint's gonna make it impossible. That's an easy fourth dragon. Are they going to engage? Trace goes into the twist advance onto Tucson. He's gonna ult himself and flash over the wall. That's a lot down. Oh, oh. nice knock up on Ares after that flash from Chaser. Frozen turning around gets a really good Morgana ult actually, but they all get out of range except for Trace. Yeah, that Righteous Glory helping them get out of the soul shackles right there. They can't clean anybody up, but yep. they do force everything to be blown defensively by Incredible Miracle. Ares and did not even get a chance to ult at all that fight. Yeah, there wasn't a route. He couldn't go in because all of the shields had been blown defensively, so it would have been just a suicide mission. Now Janair can just easily go for this Baron once they clear it out because they still have Requiem up, and now there's no... Yes, clearing out the wave in the top side. Yep. Start baiting this Baron because they have a huge cooldown advantage for a little bit, but it's like they don't want to play this one as aggressively, instead just pushing out the waves. Well, this is Janair, you know, this is all methodical. We usually see them, but you know, we're at that point in the game where they have made some kind of confusing decisions in past matches, and so, will they keep things tight at this point in the game? That's kind of the big question we've got for this team, just in general right now. Yeah, I think you, I think you could have made a more aggressive play if you had had another Oracle's Lens right there. Not going to go with that one early on, at least. Yeah. They really need more pink wards. They need to get their warding around that Baron pretty improved. I mean, yes, they can still, they have four dragons to them. They can wait another six minutes, and yeah. that's a really reliable way to close out this game. But it's a very Jinair way to close out this game as well, too. Just wait another six minutes, why not? <laughs> Not be too surprising. They're gonna try to take this red buff though. Chaser coming in. He should be able to help like Jinair get someone away. Yep, that's right. GBM gets locked up actually. Whoa, there we go. The slam dunk. 
GBM goes down. Meanwhile, Deuce in a little bit of trouble. Here comes Trace. Requiem activated. That's going to be a lot of damage. Trace comes in, blows up Ares. Lilac wow. still barely alive, but the damage from GBM combined with everything else for Jin Air. I am just has no chance in these fights. They blew up GBM and it did not matter one bit. And now it's going to be a Baron for G uh, for uh, Jenner. Yeah, I am really wanted to be able to do that earlier, but Jenner played defensively enough that there just wasn't that same opportunity. Yeah. At this point, GBM is just so strong that able to carve through almost all of Incredible Miracle, timing that Requiem right after the uh, shield from Kale went down. Yep. So there's the Baron for generic Green Wings. And now I am the four Dragons down there. Baron down, what do you do? All right, so GBM does get completely CC'd, but look how much they use on him. Bind is down now, two ults taken out. Well, as we can see, there's plenty of damage from Jenner and other sources yeah, too. Pilot is doing yeah. real well at this point in time. You can see him pop over the wall right there for the last two autos down onto Sunstar. Lilac just barely making it out. Also, yeah, he had like no health too, but they just couldn't find him. I actually don't think they needed to use three ults right there. Probably could have gotten by with a binding in one ult, and that overcommitment cost them, especially using the frozen tomb, because it would have been better if Lilac could use that on himself in a follow up to that team fight to avoid Requiem damage. Well, as I am, or as uh, Jenner rather, was coming down through the I am jungle to follow up on that fight. That would have been a very good opportunity for Lilac to do exactly that. Yeah, he had a Zonia, so he was able to live. But yeah, this is it's just too late. The lead is too big. And you see all that scaling from Janair. I am missed their opportunity to make some of these plays in the early game. Chaser now split pushing with the Baron buff. Yeah, QSS for uh, Pilot now in the unlikely situation that he actually does get caught by anything. And GBM just picking up another needlessly large rod. I wonder if we're going to see Luton's Echo get built here. It is 5-5. Five five. Yeah. Probably going to be Zonia. I've heard people <laughs> talking about it on Karthus, but... I think I think Zonia's is better. I think it's Just cause probably he, better. Too. If you look at what he has to deal with this, these, this game, he's dealing with a lot of all-in single target damage. So if he can pop that Zonia's and ride out there, engage while he has his W rolling around him, Yep. If you're going to be in much better shape. Okay, so Ping's going in from Jin Air. They have a pretty good idea. Lilac's up there, yeah. And they're just going to keep using this Baron buff to push ahead. Kind of splitting between the mid and the top lane right now. Man, Pilot is really strong. Yeah. Pretty much full build as soon as he turns that Sash into something. A Scimitar, perhaps. Yeah, why not, you know? And there goes the turret, dragging up in 45 seconds. And again, they're taking down the inhibitor farthest away from the dragon here, which will help them pick up that fifth buff. Yeah, they should. There we go, in on the Ares chaser, waiting for that knockup, being patient with it. Ares goes way deep on the pilot, but you're never gonna catch him at this point. Ult goes down onto Trace, but he's just not taking a lot of damage. Jinair turning around onto this one, ult onto Lilac. Lilac able to get some decent damage in, but Jinair is still so, uh, beefy right now that's just not going to work. Requiem comes in and there's a double, there's a, a kill. Oh, Tucson actually kill lives through it and Tucson couldn't get his ult down onto yeah. Ares quite fast enough there. And, you know, incredible Miracle, this is a good composition, but it is incredibly hard to play right. To okay. know who to shield, when to shield, when to use all these defensive abilities. And yeah. They just haven't, they haven't played it particularly well and they missed their timing. So now Jenner will just be able to close, not even going for the fifth dragon, in fact. I'll just end it. Very decisive end here from Jenner. I like what they did. Yeah, one of the most decisive ends we've seen from Jenner this season, I think. That was really tight all the way through in game one. Going to the Jenner Green Wings. I really feel like that last fight was one of the best ones for IM, actually, because they did. Tucson did get his kill ult on to Lilac, and Lilac did some decent damage, but it was just way too late. Yeah, and the scaling to yeah. uh, Jenner picking up all those scaling items early, hitting that power spike, and uh, you know around the 30 minute mark and really just running with it from there, closing quickly. So decisive win for the Jenner Green Wings. And really good early game too. Chaser got off some great ganks. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think they need to make sure that uh, Chaser does not get that wreck side, but just add it to the list. Add to the list of things that Jenner can't get. It's too big.
Not enough bands. I also love that we saw this Karthus pickup as a result.